Mr. Lut <coughs> for inviting me to tell you something about the ceramic connection between Maastricht, the <coughs> city you are right now, and uh, Nagasaki in the southern part of uh, Japan. Um, first slide. So the first slide shows us uh, a drawing of the industrial zone where the factory of the first industrialist of the Netherlands, Petrus Verhoeven, was located. In front we see the basin and uh, the inland harbour of Maastricht and a dozen chimneys in the centre of the image indicate the presence of kilns for the glass and pottery production. And uh, some people of you were yesterday evening at the same spot and, uh, where the festivities uh, took place uh, of the evening party of uh, the EA Congress of Maastricht. Uh, this map of uh, Asia shows us where a major part of the production of Maastricht was exported to in the second half of the 19th and the first decades of the 20th century, the Middle East and the Far East, uh, even to Calcutta. Uh, many of uh, Maastricht uh, ceramics were exported. But now I only will focus on the city of Nagasaki, situated on the Japanese island Kyushu, which is indicated by the arrow and is just over here. On this satellite photo of Japan you see that Nagasaki is located in the extreme southwest of the country and the former Dutch United East Indian Company, the VOC, uh, trading post of Deshima, was the only window to the world for centuries as the official guide of the Japan National Tour Tourism Office uh, puts it very well. <coughs> the artificial island of Deshima was used by the VOC as a trading post between the 7th and the 19th century. And the bridge, see down below here, this is a bridge that connects this artificial island to the island of Kyushu. And this photo shows us Petrus Regu, who, and here I quote the man himself, had the courage to sail away from our ports with two ships immediately after the opening of the ports of Japan. That was in the year 1858. And to send these ships fully loaded with mainly my own products at my own expense. The map below represents the situation of Deshima at the end of the 18th century. At that time, this port of Japan was still in use as a Dutch enclave. This uh, situation lasted until 1853. You see here that uh, there are, this here is the bridge, there's always an orientation mark, and you see here several houses, the warehouses, and the main street that was still in use at that time. The VUC didn't exist anymore, so it was uh, yeah, the moment for the free enterprise of Petrus Vigou to trade with uh, Japan. The map above, you see, is the, the later situation. It's the same orientation. You see here the bridge and uh, the main street here and several warehouses. And what is the circle here is the spot where uh, I'm focusing on because that is probably the warehouse of a Dutch uh, trader, Mr. Spengler. And uh, that was the warehouse that Peter Sehu um, was <coughs> no, not possessed, but hired for some time. In 2015, I visited Dashima for the first time. The immediate cause of my visit were two pictures I received of uh, these two stone pillars preserved at the Dashima site. You see here these two pillars, and you say, what's so special about them? There uh, was a mark on it, and uh, if you 
can read it, I think you can read it. There is P. Rigu, Maastricht. So, in Japan, this man has uh, marked two, yeah, I will show you even two uh, of these pillars. But what was uh, rather special was that uh, the, the mark was upside down. And uh, so this uh, uh, was very astonishing because uh, you wouldn't expect that uh, an inscription at knee height would, uh, would only could be read, could be read upside down. So I took uh, several pictures of both uh, stone pillars and I discovered that on the other uh, pillar that you see now to the, in this photo uh, that uh, a similar seal was preserved somewhat hidden at knee height also. For me it became clear that they were reused and the professor during a talk I had in Japan told me that these pillars were reused in 1954 because Japanese people could not read the Western script, they placed the pillars upside down because they liked it more like this. Originally, these seals were at eye level, and uh, but where did they come from? And I think that they were originally used in the warehouse of Spengler, where Regu hired space to store his goods in order to mark his belongings. My colleague, uh, archaeologist uh, Miyuki Yamaguchi, couldn't be here uh, at this moment, so uh, uh, I, she sent me some slides that I will show you, explained to me that during the excavations in Dashima, many potsherds of Maastricht ceramics were found. At one particular spot, indicated on the map as a yellow star, Let's see to the right, the largest concentration uh, had been discovered. And just outside the main stone wall, a trench was, was dug, and there many ceramics from Maastricht were unearthed during construction work. More in detail, you see uh, some of these uh, decorated, here was blue, decoration and the soil in Deshima. After cleaning these pot shirts, they all appeared to be made in Maastricht. One group could be recognized as parsimony number one, and then uh, another two, yeah, one uh, same decoration, Aurora, was also found in pot shirts at this uh, particular site. And uh, so more than uh, 150 years later, the mutual history between Nagasaki and Maastricht resurfaced. In 2015, I gave a, a, a PowerPoint presentation uh, in Dashima to explain this uh, ceramic link between uh, Maastricht and uh, Deshima. Another link between Rigu and Japan has been found in the Museum of History and Culture. One of the items I could photograph was this large plate. It probably uh, has been used as a visual catalogue. In 1859, to avoid the language barrier and uh, and you see on this uh, plate the, are displayed various products that Peter Sekou wanted to sell in Japan. So during excavations in Dashima, many potsherds were found, and the majority of the lot found in layers from the 19th century was made in Maastricht. For example, you see here uh, with, on the right at the top the mark PR, Peter Sekou Aurorea. And uh, you see here the complete plate preserved in the museum uh, shows the same decoration, Aurorea. It is interesting to remark that the name of the, of this Roman goddess 
means dawn, and so reminds of Japan, the land of the rising sun. Probably it was intended to be to uh, appeal to the Japanese people this uh, kind of uh, decoration. Uh, Willow was another uh, interesting uh, decoration, very popular for almost an entire century. And this uh, Chinese inspired decoration must have been part of the cargo in 1859 as well. Anyway, this was confirmed by a visit of several antique shops in Nagasaki. My colleague uh, Miyuki Yamaguchi shows the most two popular Maastricht ceramics in this town, Villa and Aurorea. And uh, the one to the left, the Villa I bought for 20 euros, and so it's now in the collection of the Centre Ceramique here in Maastricht. Back home. And here is uh, the, so back in Maastricht, you see here the Santa Ceramique. The Dashima Restoration Office, so the municipality of uh, Nagasaki, and uh, Santa Ceramique, um, municipality of Maastricht, of course, established a long-term relationship. In November of this year, a completely new so-called archaeology room will be opened in Dashima, with a selection of Maastricht ceramics, copper plates and molds used for the production of this earthenware during the second half of the 19th and the earliest 20th century. And indeed, in Santo Ceramique, we intend to make a new presentation as well, focusing on the worldwide distribution of Maastricht ceramics, showing indeed the columns to the left and to the right here, um, preserved in Dashima and the ceramic plate that was used as a catalog of the goods Petro Sajou wanted to sell in Japan. And that will be all for today. Thank you very much.